which 360 camera should you buy in 2023? In this video, I'll compare the best and most popular consumer 360 cameras to help you figure out which is the best choice for 360 videos, 360 photography and virtual tours, as well as which camera is the clear winner for doing both. Stay to the end to learn about some brand new 360 cameras coming later in the year, as well as my predictions about what I think we'll see by the end of 2023. The contenders in this comparison are the Insta360 X3, which was released late last year, the One X2, which is the X3's predecessor, the One RS, which was also released last year, a modular 360 camera from Insta360. The original One R is no longer available for sale, so the One RS replaces it. Then we have the One RS 1 inch, which is the first consumer 360 camera from Insta360 with a 1 inch sensor, the Theta Z1, which is now nearly four years old, but still a contender in 2023, the Theta X, which is a simpler version of the Z1 released last year. The Tricio Lite 2, which is perhaps the most underrated 360 photo camera. The X-Phase Pro X2, which looks like a weapon, but boasts 134 megapixel photos. And finally, the GoPro Max, because many of you requested it. Links to all cameras can be found below. And I do have detailed reviews of all of these cameras on my YouTube channel, if you want more info beyond what is covered in this video. Now I'm going to rank these cameras on the biggest factor as most people look for in a 360 camera. Price, design, specs, 360 videos, 360 photos, and workflows. Now to give everything in this video some context, we should start with price. The X3 is $449, One X2 $429, One RS Twin Edition $549, One RS 1 inch $799, Z1 is around $1,000 give or take, Theta X is $799, Tricio is $399, X-Phase is $1349, and the GoPro Max is $399, with a GoPro yearly subscription. Based purely on price, Tricio and GoPro Max are the cheapest, followed by the One X2, X3, and One RS. Now, in terms of actual value for money, aka what you get for that price, things look a little bit different. In my opinion, the X3 delivers the most value for money, followed by the Tricio, followed by the One RS 1 inch. You'll see why that is by the end of this video. This is cardboard. Let's talk about designs. Which of these cameras has the best design? Let's start with screens and the ones that catch my eye are the X3, the Theta X and the GoPro Max have the three biggest screens of the lot with the X3s being significantly bigger than the other two. This makes using the X3 so much easier because I find the small screen designs of cameras like the One X2, the One Inch, the One RS are so small that it's easy to choose the wrong settings and go around in circles trying to do something basic. Whereas the X3 is so big, it's almost like having a phone screen attached to your camera. What about fragility? The bigger the screen and the bigger the lens, the more fragile the camera is, therefore the more likely it is to break. Therefore the cameras that are the most fragile are the X3 with the big screen, the One RS 1 inch with the two big lenses on either side, the Theta Z1 with the big lenses, and the Theta X with the big screen. The Tricio only has one single lens, which makes it the best camera for fragility because you can put it down on its back and the lens isn't really at risk. And same with the X-Phase, even though it's a really weird shape, the lenses don't stick out from the body, which means you can put it down on a table. All of these cameras are susceptible to smashing a lens though, so you'll need to be equally careful with all of them. The cameras that are waterproof are the X3, One X2, One RS, and GoPro Max. These four cameras really are strongly branded as action cameras, therefore being waterproof is a must. Overall with design, I give the X3, One X2, and Theta X the highest marks, because firstly, they're the smallest and most compact they easily fit in your pocket, but also they all have screens that make the cameras easier to navigate and even preview back your photos and videos. Now let's take a look at the spec sheet. The X3 has a half inch sensor. It shoots 360 video at 5.7K 30 and 4K 60, as well as 3K 100 FPS, which was added after release. X3 also has a single lens mode if you wanna shoot in one direction. And this ranges between 1080p 60 all the way up to 4K 30. Insta360 claim the X3 also shoots 72 megapixel 360 photos. The One X2 has a one over 2.3 inch sensor, which is smaller. It also has nearly identical 360 video specs is the X3. It also has a single lens mode that shoots up to 2.5K 50fps and it shoots 18 megapixel 360 photos. The One RS also has a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor as well as having the same 360 video specs as the One X2. If you were to rebuild the 4K model,
mod of the One RS, which comes in the twin edition. That would give you a range of single lens options if you wanna shoot in one direction. Starting at 1080p, anywhere between 24 and 200 frames per second, all the way up to 6K 25 FPS in widescreen mode. For 360 photos, the One RS shoots 18 megapixels. The One RS one inch 360 obviously has a one inch sensor. For 360 video, it shoots 6K 25, 4K 30, and 3K 50. You could technically say that it shoots in one direction, even though with this build of the camera, you can't. But since it is the same camera as the One RS, you could just buy the 4K mod, which gives you the exact same specs as the One RS. Built as the one inch version though, it shoots 21 megapixel 360 photos. The Theta Z1 also has a one inch sensor. It shoots 4K 30 360 video, as well as 23 megapixel 360 photos. The Theta X has a half inch sensor. It shoots 5.7K 30 360 video, as well as 4K 60. The photos of the Theta X are 60 megapixels. The Tricio has a one over 2.3 inch sensor and shoots 32 megapixel 360 photos. Unfortunately, the Tricio does not shoot 360 video. The X-Phase has 25 lenses and 25 sensors, all of which are one over 3.2 of an inch. These are the smallest sensors on this list. The massive spec of the X-Phase though is it shoots 134 megapixel 360 photos. And just like the Tricio, the X-Phase also does not shoot 360 video. Finally, the GoPro Max has a one over 2.3 inch sensor. It shoots 5.6K 360 video at 30 FPS, as well as 3.6K at 60. The GoPro Max does have a single lens mode called Hero Mode, and this shoots up to 14 1440p at 60 fps. The photo resolution of the max is 16 megapixels. So going from top to bottom, the One RS one inch and the Z1 have the biggest sensors, which we'll see later on will make a significant difference when it comes to photo and video quality. The one inch also shoots the highest resolution 360 video. With single lens mode, the One RS built as the 4K mod has the most amount of flexibility if you were to use it like a GoPro. However, if you don't want to include the 4K build in this comparison, then the X3 easily easily takes the cake over the GoPro Max. Finally, when it comes to photo resolution, the X-Phase annihilates the competition with that extremely high 134 megapixel quality being the main draw card of this camera. If you were picking a 360 camera just based on the spec sheet and you wanted a bit of everything, to me, the X3 would win if you also wanna shoot in single lens mode. If you don't care about that, however, the One RS one inch has the best all around specs. So now that we've seen the spec sheet, let's take a look at how that affects the quality of 360 photos and videos from these cameras. While the Theta Z1 and X do have video modes, they really are photo focused cameras. The video modes of both are missing six axis stabilization, as well as having very short recording limits, making these impractical for serious 360 video capture. For this reason, I'll be leaving them out of the upcoming 360 video comparison, as well as the X-Phase and Tricio, since they don't shoot 360 video. If you're capturing 360 videos of your yourself in broad daylight at close range, then the remaining five 360 cameras are so close I can barely tell the difference. Even the colors, the look, and everything looks the same. For other situations though, things look a bit different. Here each of them are in auto exposure mode, but this time I'm about 10 feet away from the camera. And comparing the sharpness between these five, there is a really big difference here. The one inch by far is the sharpest, and I'm not just just talking 0.3 of a K, it looks several Ks sharper. The One RS performs the worst. The GoPro Max, I'm surprised. It's holding its own against much newer cameras and it's just as sharp, if not sharper than the X3, but both are nowhere near the level of sharpness as the one inch. One of my favorite features of the X3 is active HDR, which is essentially HDR video that you can use while the camera is moving. And of these five cameras, it's the only one that has it in 360 mode. So if you take a look at the blue sky behind me on the left, you don't see that with the other four. And this will be a really handy feature if you're ever shooting in mixed lighting and you wanna retain highlight detail and shadow detail. Here I am inside and again, the one inch has the best sharpness and the least noise by far. I intentionally made this really tricky for all cameras by putting my neon light on and having bright light coming in through the windows. And you can see I'm clearly defined with the one inch and GoPro Max and the other three I'm a bit washed out. Punching in further and the neon looks best on the one inch followed by the X3 followed by one X2. And while the GoPro Max is as good
good as the one inch for low noise, the overexposure in the light and the window is a bit too much to bear. If you're planning on shooting indoors a lot, then there's only one serious contender here and that's the one inch. Because of that one inch sensor, it's able to handle low light better as well as mixed lighting situations without the shot being completely ruined by overexposure. Also, it's worth noting that the GoPro Max has a drifting problem. I've sped up this clip so you can see what I mean. Again, if you're shooting solely outside, then all of these cameras are great options. However, if I were to rank them overall for the 360 video capabilities, then the one inch comes in a very definite first. The X3 goes in second because of active HDR being a great option in mixed lighting, as well as having so many different modes, frame rates, and resolutions to shoot in. I'd put the GoPro Max in third because it's performed well overall, followed by One X2 and One RS. If you're into 360 video, then I'm excited to announce that I'm working on a brand new in-depth 360 video course, which will take your 360 videos from good to holy <laughs> that's f good. It'll be released later this year and you can sign up to be notified when it's ready by following the link down below. And if you're watching this video later in the year, it may have already been released. Now moving on from 360 videos, which of these cameras is the best for 360 photography and virtual tours? Well, let's start with if you don't want to do any editing whatsoever. Here's what the cameras look like in their respective HDR modes without any color correction applied. The cameras where you can see any kind of detail at all in the sky are the Theta X, the Tricio and the X phase. The rest are too blown out to retain any highlight detail. The roof tiles look the sharpest on the X phase, the one inch and the X3, and the camera with the most accurate colors straight out of the camera, in my opinion, is the Theta X. If you choose to color correct, which you should if you're shooting virtual tours, then this is where it gets interesting. So starting with dynamic range, the Theta Z1 has the best dynamic range out the window, thanks to the dual fisheye plugin that I used in this comparison, which the other cameras don't have. Then the Tricio and Theta X are the only other cameras where you can see the sky outside. However, when we look at interior dynamic range around my 360 Neon, I can't believe I'm saying it, but the X phase has the best dynamic range. Here I used six shot inbuilt HDR with the X phase and it's done a great job inside, as has the Theta X. Now let's look at sharpness and be sure to watch this video in full screen so you can really see the finer details here. Because if you're seeing what I'm seeing, the X phase is so much sharper than all the other cameras. Sharp enough that you can read the writing on my light as well as the YouTube plaque, whereas the other cameras are too blurry at this level of zoom. Tricio is second sharpest. As you can see, it's the only other camera to pick up details like this. Also, I can't believe I'm saying it, but the texture on the wall is the smoothest with the X phase as well. Despite having the smallest sensor of the lot, I can barely see a speck of noise in the X phase, whereas even the smoothest of the others, which I think is the one inch, still has a little bit of noise. Now you can remove noise easily in the Topaz suite. However, if your camera doesn't produce much noise to begin with, that's always going to be preferable. Unfortunately, the Theta X falls short in this area of the shot because this corner of the room is where I aim the seam line of all cameras. And this is one of the main weaknesses of the X. Looking at one more area of this image, and again, it looks best with the X phase, the photo print and the plant look the clearest and have the most amount of overall detail, including really nice smooth surfaces. So I'm gonna say it, the X phase is the best 360 camera for virtual tours, followed by the Z1, Theta X and Tricio, which all produce professional results for virtual tours. Then the one inch and X3 come in after that. That said, you could definitely use all six of these cameras for paid virtual tour shoots. Over the past few years, the X phase team have clearly addressed some of the major flaws of the camera. The main one back in 2020 was that it didn't have good dynamic range for virtual tours, but having taken a bunch of samples, I can say that isn't true anymore. This dynamic range looks fantastic and these shots are just so sharp. The X phase really pushes the limits of what a 360 photo camera can do. It's not all sunshine and roses though. The main flaws of the X phase images are one, I've noticed in general there's a pink color cast which needs to be corrected later on. Also, the stitching isn't always 100% 
content on straight lines. Here you can see what I mean. It's noticeable, but it's not a deal breaker. Also, you can't get too close to the X phase, so it's not really a selfie camera because it clearly prioritizes the focus on distant objects and not close ones. So I'd only shoot with the X phase in situations where the detail in your scene is more than three feet away from the camera. If you're buying a 360 camera for virtual tours and you want to level up your skills quickly so you can start charging for your work, I have an online masterclass called Virtual Tour Pro, which will show you step-by-step step how to start and run your very own virtual tour business, which I'll link below. So now that we've compared these cameras on most of the important stuff, there's one thing we need to talk about. How easy are they to use? And how easy or complicated are the workflows? Well, with all of the Insta360 cameras in this video, I'd say that an easy workflow is one of their best assets. They are constantly updating the mobile app and the desktop software. And it's really at the point now where you can create highly complicated edits in minutes. And by far, these cameras have the best workflow when it comes to reframing 360 videos or exporting as actual 360 videos or actual 360 photos. The GoPro Max is pretty easy as well. However, I've noticed GoPro have stopped developing their software when it comes to 360. The Tricio is easy to use and has a fast workflow where it's literally just the tap of a button, it captures your photo and it downloads your photos easily to your phone's camera roll. The Theta X also has a super fast workflow where it's one button to shoot and you will instantly have a high dynamic range photo which looks awesome like we saw earlier. With the Theta Z1, it's a little more complicated while you can use the inbuilt HDR feature. The strength in the Z1 really is in bracketing using the dual fisheye plugin and that is a longer workflow to do as is bracketing with any camera so with the z1 you're basically doing more editing to get a better end result which is justified if you're doing virtual tours for clients however it's going to take at least five minutes per photo to edit your images which you can do with all the other cameras but i feel like you need to do it that extra bit with the z1 because its primary workflow is now using the dual fisheye plugin finally we've got the x phase which does not have an easy workflow Flow. It's mostly because of underdeveloped software. It requires following lots of steps, even to update the firmware of this camera. The mobile app looks exactly the same as it did several years ago. And because these images are so big, each photo is going to take time to capture and to stitch later on. Again, for a great result, this is the price you pay. But in terms of workflow, this camera is going to take you extra time to work with to get those awesome shots. So now that the comparison is done, which camera should you buy? Well, I'll start with the ones you shouldn't buy. The first one is the GoPro Mac because it's so old now, it's seen no firmware updates in ages. They basically stopped working on this camera. While it still does work and it does a good job, you wouldn't buy it in 2023 over something else. Insta360 have far outperformed GoPro when it comes to 360 cameras. So I would consider an Insta360 camera instead, except the One X2. This is another camera you shouldn't buy because the price is so close to the X3 that it just wouldn't make sense. While it was a great camera in its time, the X3 is an improvement over the One X2, so don't buy it. The cameras on this list that you should consider are firstly, the One RS. While there was this massive amount of hype around the One RS last year, the hype was over something that we more or less had before in the One R and One X2. And while it was an update in the One R series, the differences were so minimal. The main one really was 6K flat video if you shoot at the 235 to 1 aspect ratio, which is a pretty niche use. But otherwise, I wouldn't buy this camera unless you're looking for a modular camera that can also perform like a GoPro. Personally, I just like having two cameras. It's kind of annoying having to rebuild your camera into different things. So if you prefer to shoot 360 content, just get a dedicated 360 camera. The second camera you should consider is the Theta Z1. This camera has been a reliable choice for the past four years. However, in 2023, it's not an obvious choice anymore due to the sheer amount of competition as you saw earlier. If you've already purchased the Z1, then this is still a camera you can use professionally for years to come. However, the price point right now is just too much to justify as a new purchase when there are other options at similar price points like the X-Phase and the Insta360 one inch. And those two cameras exceed the Theta Z1 at their specific use cases. It will still be a good choice if you shoot photos at night time since the one inch sensor delivers far superior image quality than the rest. However, that's a pretty niche use case. The third camera to consider that isn't an obvious buy is the Theta X. Many people were unhappy last year that it didn't have a one inch sensor, it didn't shoot raw, and it was seemingly a step backwards from the Z1. Well, again, I think the Theta X is a niche camera for a niche audience, but it performs extremely well for that niche audience. And that niche audience is people that want to shoot virtual tours with amazing dynamic range with 
without having to do any editing. The inbuilt HDR feature is extremely impressive in most situations. Combine that with 60 megapixel resolution and this is the perfect camera for real estate virtual tours. It's too expensive to buy for 360 video and it doesn't have the editing flexibility of the Z1 or one inch. So I'd only get it if you want quick 360 photos with amazing dynamic range. Now for the cameras you should buy. Let's start with 360 photos and with the low end of the price range, the Tricio Lite 2 is the obvious choice if you wanna spend less than $400 on a camera for virtual tours. It doesn't shoot 360 video, so only get this if photography is your main use case. If you're willing to spend more, well, $1,000 more, then the X-Phase Pro X2 will be a great investment for any virtual tour business. As you saw, those images are so sharp and with the few firmware updates they've released over over the past few years, they have tackled the bad dynamic range issue, as well as some other frustrations I had when shooting with the X-Phase, like the camera constantly freezing. If you're looking for high quality 360 photos, then the X-Phase will decimate the competition in most 360 photo situations. The main downsides are the X-Phase doesn't shoot 360 video and the workflow feels a bit bare bones. So you need to be really patient when shooting and editing with the X-Phase. However, if you are a patient person, and you'll get these fantastic results that come close to 360 photos taken with a DSLR. For 360 video, I think you can guess what my recommendations are. Yes, the Insta360 One RS one inch and the X3. If you wanna spend less than $500, get the X3. If you're willing to spend more for more quality, get the one inch. While the one inch doesn't have the action features of the X3, it does have that one inch sensor, which means better videos and better photos. And I really would get this for more considered shoots where you might be shooting 360 videos for VR or you just want more overall quality for your reframe 360 videos. The X3 is the better choice if you're shooting 360 videos for social media or any type of action content. It's got a lot more features that are action friendly like being waterproof, having a smaller and easier to use design and it's cheaper if you were to break the camera you're not going to cry yourself to sleep. Although I probably still would. <laughs> also active HDR. Yeah. Now what if you're looking to shoot both 360 video and 360 photos? Which 360 camera should you buy? Well, while I hate to keep recommending the same thing over and over, again, I really do think that the One RS 1 inch and X3 are the best choices. Clearly they're the best two cameras for 360 video, but also they shoot quite good photos. With the 1 inch sensor of the 1 inch, it comes close to the Theta Z1 and Theta X, which yes, you could use to shoot professional virtual tours and build a business around. It also shoots the highest resolution and best quality 360 videos in bright light as well as low light which is also one of the strengths of the one inch. With the right manual exposure settings your shots will be not only noise free but will be better quality and have less motion blur than other cameras. So if that's your use case and you're willing to spend a bit more then the one inch is the best camera of the lot. Although I'd say the X3 isn't that far behind. While it is lacking with 360 photos as we saw with the virtual tour examples it does shoot much better photos outside, especially when using pure shot mode. Then with 360 video, you know the rest. It's got active HDR and all of the great editing options that come in the app and the desktop software that make this camera by far the best 360 camera under $500 for 360 photos and videos in 2023. So if you don't need it for a niche purpose, but you want to shoot a bit of everything, then the X3 really is the obvious choice. Did Insta360 pay you to say that? And look, I know it seems totally biased that I'm recommending Insta360 camera after Insta360 camera. But the truth is, Insta360 have a monopoly on 360 cameras. Year after year, they have literally been the only company consistently releasing cameras. And while there's only been this much difference between them over the years, this much plus this much plus this much plus this much plus this much equals this much. And that can't be said about other companies. I really do think Insta360 make the best cameras for 360 video by far. That said, I welcome any competition that comes in 2023 that could potentially knock them off their pedestal. Now let's talk about some upcoming cameras coming this year. The first one is the Lab Pano Pilot Pano. And this was announced a couple of months ago to crickets. Reason being, the specs were exactly the same as everything we currently have. I won't dismiss this camera too soon because I do have one on the way, but to be perfectly honest, I don't have high hopes. The next one is a camera that's just been announced. Well, two cameras actually, the KuCam 3 and the KuCam 3 Ultra from Dun Dun Dun. 
Kandal. Yeah, remember Kandal? The company that made the KuCam 8K, which was an 8K 360 camera that promised a lot, only to overheat for most people, causing the lenses to go out of focus, which is not good when you're shooting 8K video. Anyway, Kandal are releasing two cameras, both named KuCam, which to me, seems strange. Given the reputation of the KuCam 8K, you'd think they'd move away from that name because it wasn't a great name to begin with, was it? KuCam. KuCam. <laughs> Here are some clues in the press release. Firstly, the design looks exactly like the GoPro Max. It's waterproof with 5.7K video and 62 megapixel photos. It does 4K 60fps 360 videos, which could be interesting. It has two 1.55 inch sensors, which is slightly smaller than a one inch sensor. It will have an aperture of f1.6, four built-in mics for spatial audio. So nothing that groundbreaking, but I guess we'll see when it gets released. The KuCam Ultra is supposed to be an 8K camera. Again, I'm very suspicious, but hopefully they've learned from their previous mistakes and do thorough R&D before releasing a camera. And now for Mr. Ben's predictions for upcoming 360 cameras this year. The first one is a new or several new cameras from Insta360. That is not just a prediction, that's a spoiler. So here's what I'm predicting. The Insta360 GO 3, which is their wearable action camera, not a 360 camera, but thought I'd mention it. I predict they'll release the One RS2 or something with a similar name. I'm predicting this because I've noticed that they're clearly competing with GoPro and DJI by entering the action camera space. And this is what you get with action cameras. It's one new camera per year. So you can expect the One RS2 to come later in the year with about a 5% difference between that and the previous camera. I don't think Insta360 will release an X4 this year, simply because they just released the X3 and it's too soon to be releasing another X camera. Unless again, they go for the same approach as the action cameras by releasing one new one every single year. Will there be a new GoPro 360 camera? Hmm, maybe. I wouldn't count on it though because they haven't released anything since the Max and that's been a pretty significant time period. So clearly GoPro aren't prioritizing 360 cameras. My final prediction is for a new Tricio camera. This thing is one of the most bang for your buck 360 cameras released in the past couple of years. And it's a simple concept of the rotating camera. So clearly they've got a winning camera concept here. So what's to stop them from making something even bigger and better? So tell me, what's your 360 camera of choice right now and why? Let me know down below. And if you're considering either the One RS one inch or the X3, then be sure to check out my detailed reviews here so you can get the full list of pros and cons of these cameras. See you next time.